back to another forecast discussion. We have a severe weather threat on tap for today. SPC has outlined a slight risk, level 2 out of 5, for much of the western half of Texas, uh, including the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Waco, Austin, down to San Antonio, over to Houston, Lufkin, uh, and areas in between. The risk also extends out to the west, basically from Abilene southward. You are in a severe weather risk today. There is going to be an all-hazards threat today, although the main threats are going to be damaging winds and large hail. You'll see here the damaging wind threat extends within that slight risk area. So all the places I mentioned are going to be at the risk of damaging winds today. Large hail as well with the threat for some significant hail, two plus inch hailstones possible uh, in this hatched yellow hatched area here. Places like Dallas, Fort Worth, Waco, Austin, areas out just to the east and west of there as well are under the gun for severe weather perhaps some significant uh, hail. There is a tornado tornado threat today, but it is going to be very minimal, and we'll show you why in this video. Uh, Low-level wind shear is going to remain fairly weak throughout the day, and tornado threat will have to be very localized due to any storm interactions or boundary interactions, so we're not going to see a robust tornado threat today. The main threats are going to be damaging winds and large hail, but a tornado or two is possible within that slight risk area. So, Let's go ahead and get started here. We'll go right to our upper air maps here to show you the background pattern. This is at 500 millibars, so about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. And this is what we've got going on right now. We have a, a large trough that has um, taken on a little bit more amplification over the last day or so. We had a fairly flattened trough going into yesterday. Uh, that has uh, amplified just a little bit. We have some strong winds rounding the base of this trough. This trough will continue to meander off to the east as we go into the day today. You'll notice here down with southern extent, we go away from the core of these stronger winds within this wave. You see here over northern Oklahoma into Kansas, winds here at you know, uh, 60, 70 knots or so. Down here in central Texas, we're only at about 20 knots. So the flow with southern extent and the wind shear, the deep layer wind shear, is going to decrease with southern extent today. We will have... We also are going to be moving away from the, the main large-scale forcing, so we're going to need something uh, at the surface, like a, a frontal zone or some sort of other forcing mechanism to get storms to go. That's exactly what we have today. The main player in today's severe weather event is going to be this cold front right here. We have a surface low that is centered up on the Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas uh, triple point there, if you will. Then we have a wind shift that extends all the way down through Oklahoma into Texas as part of that cold front. The cold front extends down here at this point. This is going to shift southeastward as we go into the day today. And this is going to help overcome that lack of large-scale forcing for ascent across the region. This is going to fire storms uh, amid a very moist, unstable atmosphere across central to northeast Texas into southeast Texas eventually by uh, about early to mid-afternoon going into the evening hours today. So that cold front is going to be the main player. Let's show you the actual surface data here. So you can see we do have a very juicy air mass south of this frontal zone. You see we do have that wind shift associated with the cold front situated somewhere in here at this point. You can see to the north of the boundary, we have winds out of the northwest. To the south of the boundary, winds more or less out of the south. So we have that wind shift there. This is our cold front shifting southeastward uh, fairly rapidly today. Uh, it will slow down a little bit, but this is still going to provide a lot of forcing. A lot of storms are going to go up on this boundary, and therefore we should see a more messy storm mode today, especially given the weak deep layer shear and weak forcing for ascent uh, in the large scale. Uh, and stronger forcing concentrate along this boundary, we, we should see a fairly messy storm mode with a mix of initially semi-discrete supercells and a sort of clustery to line segment type uh, storm organization there. So, uh, But what we can see ahead of the cold front, a very juicy air mass in place, dew points well into the 60s and even into the 70s here across south central Texas, 60s up here to the Red River and south eastward, uh, so a very juicy air mass out ahead of this cold front as it pushes south. That's going to, to allow the atmosphere to become very unstable as we go into the day today. Now, let's show you the current radar. Let me freeze it right here. You see these storms ongoing in Oklahoma and some uh, showers and storms starting here in northwest Texas. These are right along that cold frontal boundary. You can see the fine line here. As we loop it, you see this fine line here shifting to the southeastward, to the south, to the southeast. That is our cold front boundary. Again, and you can see how fast it's moving. Going to slow down a little bit as it gets farther away from that, that forcing 
and that steering flow aloft uh, accompanying that trough as it gets farther into Texas it might slow down just a little bit more removed from that surface low and the forcing aloft so it may slow down just a little bit shouldn't have too much imp uh, of an uh, impact on storm mode today I think things again will be a little bit messy anyway but the this is going to be our cold front it's going to continue to move southeast throughout the morning into the afternoon these storms any storms that fire this morning should remain sub severe we may see some instances of maybe some uh, stronger gusty winds uh, and maybe some small hail this morning with any more discrete updrafts. But I think the main severe threat is going to come starting about midday to early afternoon when we have that um, some surface heating and we get uh, the instability to start building in uh, that warm sector south of the front. You'll, we'll see it by our visible satellite here. We do have quite a bit of sunshine south of that frontal zone. Some clouds here across central Texas, central to east Texas. That sh this should clear out fairly nicely as we go into the afternoon, so that instability should not have any issue building. Let's go ahead and look at some soundings. This is the weather balloons that the Weather Service offices release in the morning. This is at Norman, Oklahoma. And you can see we're already destabilized pretty significantly here across Oklahoma. Very deep moisture. The red profile is our temperature profile that the balloon sees as it goes up in the atmosphere. The green one is our dew point profile, our moisture variable. And you can see the moisture is very, very deep. Those two uh, profiles are very close together, well up into the atmosphere. That means we have very rich moisture here ahead of the cold front. This was taken at 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time, recording this just after 8 a.m. So uh, just about an hour uh, or so ago, we do see quite a bit of instability in play. Mixed layer cape, our measure of instability, over 2,000 joules per kilogram. That is fairly uh, large uh, instability values, for, especially for early in the morning like this. Deep layer shear profiles, we are closer to that trough. So deep layer shear profiles are fairly, um, fairly significant there, over about 45 knots or so of effective bulk shear. That is favorable for rotating storms. You see the hodographs here are fairly long with some curvature there in the low levels. Um, but I don't know if we will see a, a significant severe threat with these early storms. Uh, I think it's going to take a little bit longer, especially areas farther south where you see into Dallas, we have a little bit, this is the Dallas-Fort Worth 12Z sounding or 7 a.m. sounding. We have a little bit of a capping inversion in place. So that's going to hold back the severe threat into Texas until the afternoon when we can get that cold front to push the, that air up through this capping inversion. We get some surface heating to warm those low level temperatures and therefore that cap will erode fairly uh, easily by early afternoon. That's when we should get storm initiations and the threat for severe storms to begin by about midday to early afternoon. But fairly deep moisture as well here at Dallas-Fort Worth. Already quite a bit of instability elevated above this stable layer here. Mixed layer cape, about 1,500 joules per kilogram. That is fairly, uh, that is fairly uh, more than adequate for severe weather. And a shear profile that does favor severe storms as well. Although a little bit on the weak side, effective bulk shear right now is about tw just under 30 knots. We'd like to see it above about 30 to 35 knots for a significant threat for rotating storms. This is a little bit on the margins. Uh, and so, but we should see a, maybe a modest increase throughout the day in deep layer shear between about 30 and 40 knots, which should favor some rotating storms or supercells with the severe threat, threat for damaging winds and large hail, depending on storm mode uh, as that cold front pushes through. Let's look at some model data real quick here. So we'll just start off with at the 500 millibar level, that 18,000 foot level. That trough, you can see, just kind of stays there, meanders a little bit to the east. You don't see though that um, exit region of the trough anywhere near our target here in Texas. We're very much removed. We're just kind of at the base of the wave here. We do have a little bit of stronger flow overlapping that warm sector there, but for the most part, fairly weak flow a lot, and that's going to keep the shear values a little bit lower than they might usually be for a typical severe weather event where you'd see, you know, maybe a typical severe weather event would occur up in here where your winds were stronger aloft. That would create stronger deep layer uh, wind shear and more favorable environment for supercells. Here, I think we see a little bit more of a mix of supercells and uh, more, more multi cells, which don't contain a rotating updraft along this cold front because of the somewhat weaker deep layer shear. But we do have that cold front moving through, uh, and that should be more than enough to initiate some severe storms and provide a forcing mechanism. So you see that surface low moving off to the northeast pretty quickly, and that, that cold front draped behind it. Here is that boundary right through the little these kinks in these uh, pressure contours here at the surface. So this cold front again will continue to push south throughout the day. You can see it much better in the moisture fields as well. Rich moisture out ahead that pushes south 
pretty nicely into the afternoon. You can see it starts to stall a little bit as we go into the um, evening hours. It doesn't quite move super fast. So we should see storms fire along it as it progresses to the southeast. And maybe some storms out ahead in the open warm sector given strong surface heating. Not a whole lot of capping in inversion to erode. Should have a mixed mode, again, a mix of multi-cells and supercells. Perhaps some semi-discrete, perhaps some more clustered. Storms here along the front, maybe just ahead of the front out in the open warm sector in this juicy air mass. Um, so it's going to be fairly random today. We should we do have these forcing mechanisms that will organize storms, but again, this is a broad warm sector over Texas uh, with more, a little bit weaker shear as farther south you go, as we said. That could lead to a little bit more random storm formation here. So anybody in this risk area, in the dark green and yellow area, could see a storm today, could not. It's going to be fairly random uh, in, in the distribution of those storms. So uh, just be prepared uh, for storms. Again, the tornado threat's not going to be that high today, and we'll show you why with just a sounding here. Let's take one right here at Waco. This is a, a decently representative sounding for out ahead of the cold front in the warm sector. And you can see the profiles that we have going on here. Mixed layer cape. Instability very, very, very strong here. 4,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. That is extremely strong instability. That is going to foster robust convective updrafts. The problem is that we have effective shear that is under 30 knots. You can see the hodographs here a little bit on the longer side, but still effective shear only registering at about 30 knots or so. That's definitely on the margins for supercell. So again, I think we see perhaps some locally stronger shear values, especially farther north perhaps into uh, north central and northeast Texas, a little bit closer to that stronger uh, upper level flow, maybe a little bit stronger deep layer shear. So we are going to see a mix of multi-cells and rotating thunderstorms, uh, but all of these will have a threat for large hail. This is a classic, classic large hail profile with uh, very strong instability, with very weak low level shear. You can see the curvature in the hodograph, very, very weak. Effective storm relative felicity, that spin in the low levels, very weak. Only about 50 meters squared per second squared. We'd like to see values approaching about 150 meters squared per second squared for a tornado threat. That is just not the case here. Strong instability, weak low level shear. That is a recipe for some large hail. Also some damaging winds in these stronger downdrafts with these storms. Um, but uh, again, it's going to be fairly random who sees storms today. Um, along the front, we will get this band of storms to form, but out ahead as well, you could see some uh, storms out here in the open warm sector um, that pop up somewhat randomly uh, and produce those severe hazards that we talked about. So that cold front pushes through. We should see continuation of storms into the evening hours. And then eventually tomorrow, that cold front will continue to the southeast. Maybe a marginal severe threat out there. SPC does have a marginal risk level one out of five for tomorrow, Friday out here across the southeast Texas coastal region, up into Louisiana and southern Mississippi for a marginal severe threat out ahead of that cold front. And then we should be dry going into Saturday. Maybe a, a small threat on Saturday for a few severe storms down here where the moisture remains in far south and southwest Texas, but otherwise uh, fairly clear here for the rest of the state. Let's go into some uh, a uh, convective allowing model here just to show you a possibility of what the radar might look like today. So that cold front pushes off to the southeast this morning. We see some stronger cores there into Oklahoma where the shear is a little bit stronger. Here in Texas, not much act robust activity until about, oh, in, uh, at least along the front until about mid afternoon or so. And you see, we do have quite a bit of storms firing that are just in the open warm sector. The cold front's still back in here. Well out ahead of that, we're seeing some stronger storms here across southeast Texas into east Texas. Those could have that large hail and damaging wind threat, given that strong instability. But again, shear is weaker down here. So I do think the tornado threat is fairly minimal, especially with these storms out in the open warm sector. Along the cold front, maybe a slightly greater threat. But you see that band of storms start to develop across northeast Texas into central Texas with just kind of a random look to them. You see the band here along the front, but just these popcorn type storms out here. Again, it's going to be fairly random out in the open warm sector. Who's going to see storms? Then we get kind of these bands of storms to move through into the evening hours and overnight hours. And then we go into Friday morning when we have storms continuing into southeast Texas. So. All in all, a fairly low end day uh, compared to some of the, the recent events we've seen. But we will have a the threat for some severe storms. They will have uh, a, they will pack a punch. 
large hail is a possibility, perhaps some significant hail here, especially in that central Texas to northeast Texas corridor, including places like Dallas, Waco, Austin, San Antonio, areas to the west, um, Kerrville, um, Fredericksburg, up to the north, Brownwood, places like that, under the gun for perhaps some significant hail, uh, greater than two inches in diameter. Damaging winds as well going to be a threat, and again, the tornado threat, given that very weak low-level shear and that somewhat marginal deep layer shear, especially with southern extent, is going to limit the overall tornado risk. Not ruling a tornado or two out, but again, the most uh, potent threats today are going to be damaging winds and large hail. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.